Everybody, everybody write this down. FTC.gov. Right? Mm -hmm. right. This is FTC.gov. Yeah. Like, are you familiar with the fair yeah. county? Yeah. Yeah. The subsection that you'll find is not going to be. Yeah. 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 You can, you can go. <laughs> no, for her, I can't wait. I'm gonna call my ring. Don't call me. No, no, wait, I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna get into that. So, FTC.gov is you can go in, you can go and download the it's FDCPA, the short for the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act. Federal Retrieve Commission. Yeah. And just download the PDF, and you're going to download the FCRA, which is the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Now, these are the rules to the game. These are the rules. FCRA and the FDCPA. If you don't know these, if, you know, if you're dealing with anybody in the financial industry who don't know these rules, they don't know what they're talking about. This is Fair Credit what Act? Reporting Act. Because everything that we deal with is credit, period. Traffic tickets, credit, insurance, credit, everything is credit. Criminal charges, credit. Drug charges, offenses, credit. What? How is it credit? Because they want money, don't they? Okay. Well, that's court fees. I know. <laughs> yes, yeah, so court fees is all that is credit. All of it. All of it. And in the FDCPA, what they do is define what a creditor is and what a debtor is, all right? A creditor is someone who extends or offers their credit, creating the debt. Loan shark. No, not necessarily. Remember loan, someone giving you money. So if I come in to the, again, I got my coupon, it's my coupon. It's my credit, right? I'm getting a haircut from you, AJ. And you say, well, how are you going to pay for this? <laughs> then, I, then I just extend you and offer you my credit? Mm -hmm. Well, that makes me the creditor. If I come in and buy a washing machine, so how are you going to pay for this? I don't run my credit cards. Then I just extend you and offer you my credit? That makes me the creditor. Now, however, Creditor does not extend to someone who received an account through transfer or assignment solely for the uh, collection of a debt for another. Which means is anytime someone's, if you purchase something and they transfer it, you're just a debt collector. You can't get it back. So this is the thing that they don't want us to know about. It's monopoly rules. It's Commerce, whatever you want to call it, is common law. Or in other words, street rules apply. So me and AJ made an agreement. I need to borrow $500 from AJ, right? AJ said, cool, bro, you good for it. I'm going to have it back for you next Thursday, AJ. Next Thursday, AJ don't see me. Don't he got the right to call me? Yeah, I give you Friday. <laughs> Even if he called me on Friday. He got all right in the world, don't he? By every street rule. Can you call me, though? Yo, I'm calling for AJ. Yeah, none of my business. <laughs> and, and you're going to look at him just like everybody. Why ain't AJ coming? Well, who the hell is you? <laughs> right? Yeah. Street rules apply. 805. I didn't give. What's your name, bro? Hope. Hope. I didn't give Hope. My prior direct consent. Prior direct. That means I got to talk to you and AJ at the same time. Well, and AJ said, look, if I don't call you, such and such going to be calling you. And I'll be like, cool, I'm cool with that. That's prior direct. Now, this is where it gets sweet. Now let's say if you did call me, and then now you're disturbing me. Well, I can charge you for my time. Now you owe me fifteen hundred dollars, cuz. 
just because you want to be in my business. Or AJ said, I don't give a damn what AJ said. I didn't say it because I got to give you prior direct consent. You owe me $1,500. But do you have like, wow. The, uh, Authority to do that? Yeah, like because ah. like I know like lawyers. Now when you get them, what like we have is, what we have you. what we have is called a private right of action. I want to write that down. As a consumer, you have a private right of action. Now this is what I practice. Not something I'm here telling y'all. Y'all do this. Y'all do this. This is what I. This is how I make my living. All right. So anytime a debt collector calls me and they didn't follow the proper protocol, so all the proper protocols are in here. That's why you want to read the FDCPA. I'm not going to go through all of them. It's 14 different acts. They didn't follow one of those proper protocols. Also, they have to, they're in violation of any one of them. You owe me $1,500. Because I have a private right of action. Like any one of them. Any one. Look at that. What you did. Yeah. <laughs> Any one of them you violated, and it's up to my interpretation, because I'm the customer, and I'm always right. I'm the, I'm the creditor. You ain't nothing but a debt collector. What is you calling me for? Did you have my prior direct consent? I'm like, oh, right. Did you have my prior? No, you didn't. Go ahead. I got a quick question. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. Say, Pastor, you know you do the time, and you get hit with a course call fine. Mm -hmm. Now, over the year, Multiple years, decades go by. Mm -hmm. Now that money has accumulated. It mm -hmm. went from twenty-eight or twenty-three hundred and some change to pay maybe six, seven banks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that alone is a violation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because what they what are they collecting it for? You see, what I'm saying. Okay. So then coming back trying to collect the debt that you already paid is already paid anyway. My debt was paid by me doing the time. You know what? So what are you talking about? Anybody else trying to collect you? Just a debt collector, period. And so in the fines, what a debt collector is. So we need yeah, to start. Yeah, what did they say they work? I don't want them. And it'll tell you. Okay, if you, if you and, the, and the FDCPA tells you who a debt collector is. Anybody with a, who's claiming that they're vouched for, bonded, or affiliated with the government or with any state. Using a badge. Oh, yeah. Police. Ooh, the badge. Police don't work for the state. Who they work for? They work Remember for when the government shut down? The police are still doing it. Okay, then that means they don't work for the government. Ooh. How the government shut down, y'all still rolling <laughs> hard. Y'all still 12 in it. <laughs> How? Because you work for Charlotte Mecklenburg Municipality, which has an EIN number, which is a, a private business. Private, yeah. But we don't know we the consumer. We still consumer. We the kings. <coughs> the kings and queens. We the top of the top. Everybody else is under us. Judges, police. <coughs> hey, so is that why you could dispute your uh some of your credit? Some on your credit report, like if they send it to a collect agency or something like that? Is okay. that why you could dispute it? 805, right? 805B. It tells you uh, communication with a third party without the prior direct consent of the consumer, that being you, or the express permission of a court of competent jurisdiction. I'm going to break that down. All of these laws are federal laws. All right? That means it can only be. Uh, ruled on by a federal court unless you as a consumer give them the prior direct consent so do you think whoever that debt collector is calling you got uh, a court order from the federal court to call you about fifteen hundred dollars no hell no so they already in violation uh, 805 they owe you and it tells you right in the fdcpa each violation they have, you have a private right of action to collect on that violation. Whatever they, whatever actual damages that they have did to you. So if they call you about $1,500, you owe me $1,500. That's actual damage. Because if I paid it, then I would have been damaged for $1,500, right? So if they call me about 40000 
you owe me 40 racks. Because I would have been damaged for that if I had paid you. Now let's talk about your credit report, right? It says, and then, I, I, I'm trying to speak for what you said. If, if, so basically, if the, the prior senior, the record seems to violate then you, they have violated? Yeah, did they, did you? What part, okay. what part of that is the same? 805. 805 uh, subsection uh, subsection 805 section uh, B where it talks about communication with a third party right so let's say they hand it over like he, I, 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 well, you said earlier that they have third parties mm -hmm. okay so they'll hand it over to a third party right so third party so we got it from such and such such and such okay cool you still didn't get my prior direct consent so now I can sue the person who sent it to you and I'm sue you because I didn't give them my prior direct consent to communicate to you and you ain't had my prior direct consent to communicate with me so you catch everybody up in the web so is that when like let's say like I've been on the phone like with my bank mm -hmm. and I'm like need to click someone that in mm -hmm. so is that when they say oh, are you giving us direct consent to talk to this person about your account that's just that's one instance. But now, let's say, what's your name, bro? V. V. Okay, V owns a collection company. And you Bank of America. And you call in, and then now you I me, right? So they would have to get me on the line and then put V in and say, hey, can you talk to V about collecting this debt? And then I say, yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's prior direct. But if they gonna go ahead, you go ahead and send it to V. Yeah, you violated. Yeah, yeah. You violated. You violated and you violated for receiving because he know he ain't getting no prior direct consent from me and you know you didn't either. So, okay, so now that we know this, what's the very first step? Well, I'm speaking. <laughs> the very first step that I can take to handle this because first, the first step, the first step is going in to read the rules, right? 813. Of uh, I think it's section K of the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act shows you the monetary value. All right, the liability of what it is, the liabilities. So you can charge them, and you have a private right of action. That's what Congress gave us, so that we don't actually have to go into court. Now, the, the secret to all of this is all the debt collectors know this stuff. You know why? Because and it's, it's funny because all those notices, and if you go back and look at all of these debt collection letters, on the bottom of it, they're going to have these long, small print. And they're telling you this is a notice from a debt collector. Now, all right, so say you do that, right? Mm -hmm. you, uh, you end up going through the process. Now here's the next process. Here's the next process. I already got your question. I already, I already know your question. So this is how it goes, right? Boom. This is this is how, before you get into that. So this is the, this is how it goes. So now you done told them, hold on. I gave you prior direct consent. Now 805 section two tells you, hey, C cease and desist. Cease and desist. No, no, you ain't got anything. Else. Cease and desist. I mean, tell them to cut, that, cut them ties immediately. Right. Again, they didn't have prior direct consent. Now, and they can only report on your credit unless to effectuate a post judgment judicial remedy. Court order. You gotta have a court order. So it actually says in the law, you can tell the debt collector, I'm not going to pay it. Mm -hmm. Damn. <laughs> I'm not paying it. And you shut the up about it. Mm. But they got 30 days, though. No, they don't. Now, right now, you shut up. Because <laughs> <laughs> remember, I'm the king. I'm the customer. I'm the creditor. And who the hell did you be calling me about any of my business? I ain't got to be that nasty about it. But I say it for y'all that way because I'm really actually extremely nice because I know they're calling me to give me money. <laughs> so I'm extremely happy. I get so happy. In fact, they hang up quick because. Hey, you want to right, what the hell are you happy about? I'm calling you to collect. No, you're not. You're calling me to give. 
<laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's a it's a paradigm switch, uh, uh, shift. It's a just like that. So you don't have to be afraid anymore. And the reason I came like this, you know, I grew up in a house where all the bills would be piled up on the table. Piled up, months and months and months. Mail all over the place. I mean, the house it looked like a, a mountain of bills. My parents didn't know that that was money on the table. That money that they had to pay out, money that they should have been collecting. And that's by design. It's not their fault that they didn't know that. The system is designed. So you guys are in school to cut hair. You're going through all this tensorial knowledge and the point and that, all of that stuff, right? And most of us probably, exception of one or two, have went through already 12 years of school, right? Did y'all know anything about any of this stuff? Nope. No. No. By design. No. That's what I'm saying. So the system is set like that. I didn't beat it. You don't. You work with it. You don't beat the system. Mm -hmm. You find a loophole. Yeah. No, yeah. no, you don't find a loophole. They're working in the loopholes. No, you don't need to work in the loopholes. You work with the law. You don't need to. You don't need no loopholes. Real clear. What they can't do. These are all in the Fair Credit Reporting Act and the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act are telling you everything a business cannot do against a consumer. This is consumer protection. Not about what you can't do, what loopholes you need to be in. They only was operating in loopholes. You don't need no loopholes. You king. But you don't know that because you don't know the rules of the game. So you still think you're getting along with somebody that you they finance. I did too. So once you start to read the rules of the game, then your mind starts to open and you start to be a little more creative. Right? Because when you're cutting hair, right, you come up against that cow like that one to go this way, you, right, you gotta be a little more creative. You can't get stuck on that one spot, right? You gotta be more creative. But if you didn't have the right tools in your possession to do that, it'd be a lot more difficult, correct? Right. Now my blades don't adjust. Yeah, you could do it, but you better have a comb, <laughs> right? Old school. You could do a kip clipper over comb, but comb if you ain't got razor. that, what you gonna do? These are your, these are your uh, tools for the game. So you said we done cutting hair without a comb. You, I don't know how you've been cutting hair. <laughs> cutting with a spoon, <laughs> damn near. You don't know this. For real. For real. Because because it makes you it makes you more it, it makes you educated. Because everyone is affected by. It. I don't care how what your your uh, social status is. I don't care what your financial background is. If you don't know this, you be you not you don't know. You just don't. So certain things that you stop being affected by once you put that knowledge into place. <laughs>